Hi, everyone. Greetings. We are in 1 Corinthians, starting chapter 3 now. Just going to read four verses because there's something really impactful and necessary in these four verses that you get con totally wrong if you're a Jehovah's Witness. So mm -hmm. we need to underline what's in these four verses and and hang around for the quotes at the end because Leon Morris, F.F. F. Bruce, and Seiki Barrett have something really significant to say about the meaning of the Greek words here, which is all important. Mm -hmm. We're going to read it from the ESV first and also from the New World Translation so you can see what we're talking about in the words that you're familiar with if you're coming from the witness background. ESV says, But I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now you're not ready, for you are still in of the flesh. But while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another I follow Apollos, are you not being merely human? And the New World Translation has, So, brothers, I was not able to speak to you as to spiritual men, but as to fleshly men, as to infants in Christ. I fed you milk and not solid food, for you were not yet strong enough. In fact, neither are you strong enough now. For you are still fleshly, since there are jealousy and strife among you. Are you not fleshly, and are you not walking as men do? For when one says, I belong to Paul, but another says, I to Apollos, are you not acting like mere men? Well, there are slight differences, but the thought is still the same. I, I yeah. love the fact, though, that the word fleshly is used by the watchtower. Mm -hmm. Because that gets across their essential problem. They think of sins as fleshly. Whereas when Paul uses the word fleshly, he's not even talking about bodily functions necessarily. Mm -hmm. He's talking about attitudes yeah. which either reflect the attitudes of God, the character of God, or they do not. Yeah. And the, the one that he talks about the most, and you don't notice it specifically here, but you notice it in chapter 1, is divisions and sects and examples. Paul... Those who say, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to, to Apollos, mm -hmm. are you not merely human when you say things like that? So fleshly in Paul tends to mean An the base nature, yeah. the human nature as opposed to the divine nature, nature and character. For instance, in the Galatians 5 list of the fruits of the Spirit, while in the same chapter he's got a list of the works of the flesh, and there's 15 of them. And if you look at that list, which we challenge everybody to do, look at that list, and most of them are about things we wouldn't even consider to be carnal if we're Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah. Things like divisions and yeah. enmity. Here he, he Here, does talk about exactly that. jealousy. It. Jealousy and strife. So when we thought of, of flesh, I think we thought of sexual immoral sins. Or other sins or, against your own yeah, body, like alcoholism and smoking. Drugs, yeah. those kinds of things. But we did not think in terms of anger or, or uh, bit, you know, uh, bickering in the congregation, jealousies. Those things you more or less were, you have to deal with those yourself uh, as an individual, as a witness. You yeah. don't bring those to the elders. I need help with my anger problem. You know, you don't even think to do that. It's only if it's a sexual sin or a drug sin or a smoking sin. Those are the things that you think of as fleshly sins. And they're, they're the ones you get disfellowship for. Yeah. Whereas, do, does anybody ever get disfellowship for being sectarian and dividing from his brethren? Mm -hmm. There is an exception, of course, apostasy. If you criticize the organization, then you can be disfellowshipped for what they would call a spiritual sin. Mm -hmm. But it is a fleshly sin, according to Paul, sectarianism yeah. and divisions and enmity. And the fact that they are experiencing this within this congregation, but they're still called brothers. Yeah. Would that happen in any congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses? If there were divisions, if people didn't think exactly alike 
you wouldn't be allowed to stay. You certainly wouldn't be called a brother anymore. He keeps calling them brethren. Every time he wants to make a strong point and even call them a name, as we might refer to it, you are yet carnal, you're, you're babes in Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, every time he does that, he softens the blow with something like brethren. Uh, in the in the first chapter, yeah. it was saints. He calls them saints before he gets around to criticizing them for anything. They're holy ones. And the mm -hmm. big mistake we make if we're witnesses, or for that matter, immature Christians, in in Orthodox churches, we think of immature Christians as imitation Christians, and we yeah. separate from them on that basis. Yeah. Where whereas in the church, there are stages of development, just like a like a a child has stages of development, infancy, toddler, you know, teenager, adolescent, uh, middle-aged, and then mature. Daughtering. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like us. Yeah, but that there should be stages. I don't think we thought in terms of stages no. when we were Jehovah's Witnesses. Everyone was supposed to be on the same level. They all had to think alike, say the same things, believe the same things. And behave the and same way. And if you did have struggles, yeah. don't tell anyone. Yeah. So, yeah. no, it's a different way of thinking. And, and by the way, all the quotes here back this up. Mm. So you're going to hear technicalities about the Koine Greek here that only a Bible scholar will be able to supply. For instance... This is Leon Morris in his commentary. By the way, this is a very common one, a very popular one. The Tyndale, Tyndale. the Tyndale series, Leon Morris's commentary, which was revised later, I believe. This is the original edition. Uh, this is on page 63 of Leon Morris's comment on verse 3. Paul reaches the root of the matter with his accusation that they are yet carnal. He has changed his word for carnal from the sarkinos, S-A-R-K, of verse 1 to sarkikos, with two Ks now. The inos termination signifies made of, thus in 2 Corinthians 3, 3, tablets made of stone. Lithinos are contrasted with those made of flesh, sarkinos. The ikos ending rather means characterized by. That's a very mm -hmm. significant difference if you're coming from the witness world where in your mind, carnal means made of flesh. So you read in chapter 15 of Corinthians that they're going to be raised in a spiritual body and you assume that means made of spirit, mm -hmm. but it does not. Paul's habitual usage is, as Morris points out here, he goes on, we see it in psuchikos of the natural man and pneumatikos of the spiritual man in chapter 2, verse 14, etc. The difference between sarkinos and sarkikos is like that between fleshy and fleshly. Sarkinos is the more thoroughgoing word, but there is no blame attached to it as applied to those who are young in the faith. But sarkikos, characterized by flesh, when used of those who have been Christians for years, is blameworthy. Aha, uh -huh. mm -hmm. that's a moral fault, not an immaturity fault, right? Yeah. The mature believer is pneumatikos, characterized by spirit. To be characterized instead by flesh, as the Corinthians were, is the very opposite of what a Christian should be. Mm -hmm. Flesh, of course, as often in Paul, is used in an ethical and moral sense. It indicates the lower aspects of man's nature, as in Romans, and he gives a list of scriptures here. By the way, if you want mm -hmm. to access these notes that I'm reading from, go to our website, onewonders.org. Look under Study notes? Studies, studies notes, and you'll find a list of the Corinthian studies and all of this, all of these quotes are in there. Mm -hmm. And you have F.F. Yeah. F. Bruce in. Yeah. And, I, uh, I think just when you're reading there, you can see the difference that these are, are people who are, are physical people of the day. They're not, uh, in the, you know, resurrected already and in the spirit, as you think, when you're a witness. They're physical people, and one is called spiritual, and one is called fleshly. Yes, yeah, so that distinction between fleshy, all of them are made of flesh, fleshy, yeah. but yeah. but not all of them are fleshly. They're, right. they're behaving according to the Spirit's lead. Mm -hmm. But they are all new Christians, so you wonder, mm -hmm. it, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't be a marvel to us that some of them are fleshly, because 
they've only been Christians yeah. for a few years. They're at this mature. Point. They're yeah. babes. Babes are infants in Christ. But they're still Christians. Okay. So um, this is F.F. F. Bruce. He says, For Paul, while all unspiritual men are men of the flesh, it is possible even for those who are in some sense spiritual men to be so described. The Corinthian Christians had received the Spirit, but they did not live as those who had received him. Indulgent in party strife was not a, a spiritual activity, but a fleshly one. They had not yet begun to produce the fruit of the Spirit, but continued to indulge in some, at least, of the works of the flesh, among which dissension and party spirit are listed. By flesh, in this sense, Paul does not mean the body, but fallen humanity with the sum total of sinful propensities in inherited by natural birth. Mm -hmm. We also had uh, a quote from Barrett, C.K. Barrett, that we wanted to read. Let's see. Okay. Spiritual and fleshly mark older and younger, mature and immature brothers within the same family, not those who are within and those who are outside a Gnostic circle. So mm. that's the point you were saying. So you the don't witnesses, avoid immature people. That's, that's the way that Gnostics think about separations. Get out of the circle. Avoid them completely. Yeah, protect so yourself. No yeah. surprise then that the disfellowshipping doctrine of, of Jehovah's Witnesses is that drastic. Yeah. He also says, Fleshly men are not those who habitually indulge in sensual sins, but those whose existence is determined not by God, but by considerations internal to themselves, or internal at least to humanity, as distinct from God. So they're thinking more humanly. Yeah. Well, these are very, very useful distinctions, like I said, to mm -hmm. check them out. And from now on, if we forget to tell you about it, know that all of the Corinthian notes that we're using, all the, pretty much all the quotes we're going to be using in the Corinthian series will be found in the notes mm -hmm. under Corinthians in the study section of the website you'll see the buttons besides pdf archive there's studies recently mm -hmm. supplemented by max with all the current not all the corinthian ones are there but they will be there soon but all of these ones there will the even are be there. additional quotes that we don't decide to read so. that's true that's true too yeah. we we haven't used that many quotes so far have we mm -hmm. no only if we thought it was going to be helpful to you right now uh, yeah. With the t the text we're reading. What are our links? Just uh, one, one video, called "Sects and Sex." You can spell those two. S e c t s <laughs> and s e x. In Corinth. In Corinth, and uh, this leads to a discussion not only of an uh, overview of the first five chapters, but specifically on the disfellowshipping idea of chapter five, where the Watchtower gets its its doctrine from. Mm -hmm. then you realize, no, their doctrine falls apart just knowing the Corinthian context. Mm -hmm. So check out that video and I'll also put a link to the Corinthian playlist. Good. See you next time. Bye.